Iliox therapy provides palliative care. It relieves symptoms of airway distress, but it doesn't fix the cause of the disease and should be used only until definitive care corrects the underlying problem. Clinical indications and contraindications should be reviewed prior to the challenging of the competency-based objective. Contraindications are generally classified as inexperienced physician or respiratory therapist using the therapy. If we review our respiratory physiology, we see that Ohm's law is associated with the pressure gradient and flow to move gas through the airway, a combination of the two creating airway resistance. Of the total pulmonary frictional resistance, 20% is associated with tissue resistance, while the remaining 80% is associated with airway resistance. Note how the resistance of the airway decreases from the upper airway to the lower airway. The airflow patterns that occur in the upper airway versus the lower airway are distinct and represented by Reynolds number. Laminar flow is mostly associated with airways less than 2 mm in diameter, whereas turbulent flow is associated with upper airway issues. If we compare the pressure required to produce a given flow rate with laminar flow, it is noted that it is affected more by gas viscosity versus the gas density. The opposite is true associated with turbulent flow. For Reynolds numbers greater than 2000, the pressure required to produce a given flow rate is influenced by the gas density, not gas viscosity. Heliox therapy is used for both of these principles. Prior to the commencement of the competency-based objective, the student is encouraged to review the tanks, labeling, color coding, safety connections, as well as flow meters. If it's a Heliox flow meter, the indicated flow is the actual flow, versus if it is an oxygen flow meter, there is a correction factor of 1.6 or 1.8 for 70-30 or 80-20 mixtures respectively. Transport the cylinder using appropriate safety precautions as well as adapt a non-rebreathing mask into a partial rebreather by the removal of the inlet valves so that the reservoir can be used to capture the anatomical dead space during expiration. Attach the partial rebreather and turn on the cylinder prior to the commencement of the CBO. You should also be prepared to do a cylinder duration calculation using the appropriate safety factor as well as cylinder factor for the appropriately sized Heliox tank. Use aseptic technique throughout the procedure. Wash hands at a sink or with an approved alcohol-based product. And don gloves for all aspects of the procedure at the patient's bedside. Verify, interpret, and evaluate the physician's order. Identify the patient, yourself, the department that you represent, and your role as a respiratory therapy student at NBCC St. John. Explain the procedure and confirm patient understanding as appropriate to the patient's condition. The pre-assessment phase may now begin. This may include, but not be limited to, pulse oximetry, pulse check, auscultation, and respiratory rate. Implement therapy and ensure patient safety and comfort. Look for titling of the reservoir bag on the partial rebreather mask. This will ensure that flow is set appropriately. Observe patient for unfavorable signs or symptoms by pay attention to the bedside monitoring. Document appropriately according to your site protocol and notify other personnel as appropriate, including the preceptor, 
to whom you are assigned. With a thorough review of the physiology, the technology, as well as the competencies associated with Heliox administration, you should be successful in the challenge of this competency-based objective.